What's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. Thanks for tuning in. Today in this video we're going to talk about Nexus Protocol. Guys, if you haven't, or well if you can't really tell my voice, I've been smoking some cigs and it is killing me. Uh, but I gotta get, I gotta stop smoking man. It's, it's not really good for me. I'm just kidding when I say that guys. I don't smoke. Guess I'm getting sick, but hey, that's how it rolls. Anyways, what's going on with Nexus Protocol? Well, I'm super bullish on the coin. I've been doing a lot of research on this. And in fact, there is a interview with uh, one of the founders of Nexus and he was kind of explaining it. And I'll give you guys a TLDR on this video and why I'm uber bullish on Nexus protocol. Of course, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. But what I want to tell you guys is Sai Sai, baby, you know, like tree tree or three three. You guys get the point. Anyways, um, we're going to go ahead and break down a couple of novel concepts about Nexus Protocol and why I'm uber bullish on it. Uh, there are some other coins in the Terra ecosystem that are bullish on as well, um, but I'm very bullish on Nexus Protocol. Just a TLDR on what they're doing is basically with Anchor Protocol and Mirror Protocol, when you are borrowing against those coins, as in providing Ethereum or Luna as collateral to borrow UST, and if you're on Mirror you are providing UST to borrow some of the stock to quote unquote short them. Um, when you do that, you have a chance of being liquidated. You Some people check every day, some people don't, whatever. But there are chances with a black swan event. A uh, black swan event is randomly when the token prices just tank. And when that happens, well, you can get liquidated. And that's what Nexus Protocol is solving. And how they do that... <clears throat> is actually there's three different ways that this can occur the first way is it actually has a bot that automatically checks the vaults to make sure they're in the correct collateralization ratio every 15 seconds for example the anchor liquidation um, bot goes and checks every 30 seconds so they're actually quote unquote front running the bot where the fail safe is well the second option is to default to the anchor bot so basically it will liquidate and well actually it'll go at the same time as the anchor bot so theoretically it should work now third is if the anchor bot goes down well theoretically there's going to be no liquidations occurring um but nexus takes the safe side and just says okay look we're going to do this and what will happen is on the bot that's front running what will happen is they automatically just take the loan to value and just say all right we're gonna play it safe and literally go to like 30 or 20 percent loan to value instead of like the whopping 60 percent anyways let's go ahead and break down why i'm very bullish on it and there is a photo in their white paper oh this is also um what you guys are looking at kind of what have i what i explained so optimal mode 99 percent. this is what you look for if it fails safe mode we're going to do 80 percent and then anchor price oracle fail we're going to do emergency so mode so it's 50 percent loan to value so it's actually only going to be 30 percent because the maximum loan to value on anchor is 60 percent so there are a couple of different vaults that they're going to have um they have three different ones it's going to be mirror it's going to be the nexus eth and the anchor so let me show you guys how the money flows roll i'm going to zoom this out just a bit so you guys can see it Okay, so let me go ahead and explain to you guys the anchor earn section. I'm going to get rid of my face because it's really in the way. So here's what's going to happen. <clears throat> the user is going to deposit B Luna into the pool, into the Nexus Vault. And the Nexus Vault is going to be great. Thanks for this, Johnny. Here's your receipt. You get some in Luna. And you're like, yay, I'm so happy. This is so cool. And Nexus is like, bruh. It's the same thing as B Luna, except it has an N, but whatever. So now Nexus is going to take your B Luna, deposit it into the Anchor Borrow Vault, and it's going to borrow UST. Now this UST is going to go to the Anchor Earn Vault. This Anchor Earn is going to earn a UST, so they are actually going to be earning Ank Rewards now that they are borrowing against it, and they're going to be earning rewards on the deposit. 
what's very important about this is a lot of people were leveraging up with Luna. They were getting the UST and using it to buy more Luna, deposit the Luna, get another loan, buy more Luna and compound. And that's kind of what causes a cascading effect. So they're actually taking a safer approach or a more safe approach. So now this AUST is actually earning them money. That is very important to understand. So this actually saves it for a rainy day. If you don't think there's going to be a rainy day, well, think again. It always rains, eventually. So you have the community pools and the Psi governance stakers who are getting the Psi token, basically holding up the network. But we're just going to forget about those right now because that's going to confuse you. But this user who has this in Luna right now, this anchor rewards that's going back to the vault, it's being dumped and it's actually buying the Psi token. So this Psi token is given to the in asset token holders. So now the in asset token holders are getting paid in Psi, but these anchor rewards are being dumped and creating buy pressure on the Psi token. So that is the first thing for buy pressure. Now you're like, oh, well, they'll just dump the token. Well, sure, they can dump the token too, but there are people who are going to stake because as more and more people use this protocol, it earns a portion of the fees, so it will start earning more and more money. So something to keep in mind is this on this as well. Now there's another vault I want to show you guys, which is the ETH vault. Here's how you can compare the rates. Yearn will get you 0.87% on your ETH. Convex, about 3. ETH 2.0, which is Lido, 5.8. And ETH Nexus, about 10. And how they do it is, well, with this picture. This picture is worth, well, more than a thousand words, actually. So let's show you guys what's going on in the oil maker. Whatever you want to call that. I don't know. I made up that word. So the user deposits ETH or SD ETH, whatever, into ETH Nexus. They get the in asset. Remember, the in assets, you get the point, whatever. So now Nexus takes that staked ETH and puts it into the factory pool, which is going to go to Anchor to get BETH. So we don't really need to focus on this little portion, whatever, so who cares? Um, we're just going to talk about this section right here. So this is the proxy. This is the ETH Nexus proxy. This is where the haymaker happens. So we got BETH in here. Now what do we do with our BETH? Well, this BETH, we're going to take it into a vault and deposit it into here to get in ETH. This in ETH <clears throat> is now going to be earning Psi because if you remember, the in assets are earning the quote unquote Psi token. If you guys didn't know, B ETH is automatically earning UST. So there is buy pressure again on the Psi token. If you are depositing your B ETH into Anchor, you don't see the UST position. But if you go over to here into the bond section, if you go to claim, this is where your UST normally shows up. Just so you know, just a quick TLDR back on that. So this is going to be creating the buy pressure on the Psi token for your B ETH or B Luna. Same concept, same junk, different day. So now you're getting this Psi token. You can go ahead and stake your Psi to get some staking rewards, but that's entirely up to you what you want to do. But say you're just a dumper. That's fine. You can be a dumper. You can dump the coins, do what you need to do. Um, but other people will be like, oh, I'm staking Psy because the rewards are nuts and ham right now because this protocol is like the most used protocol ever because everyone's using it for Mirror, everyone's using it for ETH, everyone's using it for Anchor. So another use case for the size, you can actually put it with the NETH LP. This is going to be earning rewards as well. And that's something to keep in mind. As you guys can see on the farming pool, Right now, they are just farming the Psi UST. That's a quick overview of the ETH vault. Now, here's the tokenomics on Psi. You got the protocol fee rate, the tax rate, whitelisting additional assets. So you need Psi. That's governance right there. Updating yield governance. Benchmarking governance. User community governance. Bounty system governance. Protocol fee rate. That's just staking rewards, basically. Same thing with the tax rate. Value accrual. Psi tokens will be the medium of yield distribution within the Nexus protocol. AKA, whenever Anchor, Mirror, or ETH, or BETH is earned, it's going, or UST, it's going to go back and buy the Psi token and pay out. Also, will be collected for Psi buybacks in the Psi UST pool, 
which are awarded to in-asset holders, Psy stakers, and the Nexus community pool. Psy Psy, baby. That's how it rolls. Protocol fees for Psy stakers, entire yield to use entire yield used back or used for token buyback and in asset psi lp and psi serves as a medium exchange for nexus swap and that's something very important now if someone wants to buy i don't know in eth or um in uh in luna how do you buy it you need psi guys that's more buy pressure on the psi coin i mean ah what do you not understand? That's why I'm so bullish on UST. Why am I bullish on UST? Well, to play on all the rides, play on Mirror Protocol, play on, a play on Anchor Protocol, what do you have to have? You got to have UST. And what happened to Luna when people finally realized the cat was out of the bag? Luna was like, didn't you realize my coin was a moon? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Uh, but anyways, guys, you have to use Psy to buy these assets. And why would you want to buy this asset? Well, if you can earn 2% on your ETH or less than 1% or 5% or over 10%, which one would you rather do? Everyone knows you would do less than 1% because that's just the best thing to do. In fact, everyone in the world does it. They go to banks. In fact, people get negative interest rates. I guess people like to do that. But me, I would rather have the in asset. But that's just TLDR on me. Anyways, guys, um, that's really next protocol in a nutshell i'm trying to do these videos a bit slower and more in depth if that was in depth enough leave a comment below saying i did it right um if it was still too long or i wouldn't say too long but still too confusing leave a link or leave a comment in the description below and be like bro you suck at explaining you need to slow it down and you need to like explain it like super super long and i'll start going slower I'm trying to do the best I can to describe, guys. I have ADHD, so really hard to focus. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. And if you guys want to jump in the Discord to hear how I'm playing different farms, what other altcoins I'm looking at, and what I'm doing in the markets, you guys can jump in the Discord as well. we got a lot of people way smarter than me. They're in there as well. So anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for watching this video. Let's go ahead and leave you guys with a wisdom. And we are in Proverbs chapter 15, verses 2. The tongue of the wise adorns knowledge, but the mouth of the fool gusses folly. Guys, be smart. You got one mouth, two ears. Use those ears, close that mouth. So much things, or so many better things will happen to you. It's true. Y'all guys can also catch me on tweeters. Uh, it's at rent a home fast. Like literally, at rent a home fast.